Hello, hello, hello. It's your girl, Stevie Aisha Mills. Super, duper, uber excited to be back with you for another episode of The Conversation. You know we're all about bringing out the why behind the what of what people do. And today I'm absolutely phenomenally super califragilisticly <laughs> over the top because we have a lovely, lovely woman who is doing some amazing things in life and business. And so, you know, um, you got to listen, get your pad and your pen and whatever else you need because I feel like this is going to be a revolutionary, life-changing conversation. So Aikisha, Lanisa is what you might see her um, as on Facebook. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to allow Aikisha to introduce herself. Akisha, what? Uh, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you, Stevie? I'm glad. Thank you for having me on today. Good. I am awesome. I get excited about really bringing the why behind people's sweat, and I know that you have a phenomenal story, and yeah. we just want to allow you to kind of tell people who you are, and um, we'll discover the what in our conversation today, but let's Talk about why you do what you do. Okay, so my name is Aikisha Lanise, and I am a best-selling author and motivational speaker. I also have a life skills program called Make It. Um, that's part of the why of what I do. I am a single mom of two girls, and uh, in college I figured out that one of my missions in life was to help people um, as a single mom people kind of told me that I would not accomplish anything, that I was destined to be on welfare for the rest of my life, and that I had ruined my life because of the decisions that I made. It, and of, that I made. And, of course, the decisions were uh, different in the course and the change of my life, and they did. It was a turning point in my life, and it changed what I was going to do for the rest of my life. I just didn't know how it was going to play out, but I did not end up doing and being what people said that I would based on that decision. So that's kind of the why and what I do, and I want to touch people. So. Awesome. I love it. I love the last thing you said. You want to touch people. And that's amazing because I know as an author and a speaker, we get to do that in mass proportions, right? We don't, we get to do it in intimate groups as well as big groups. And I appreciate the fact that you also talked about your family life. And so when you really think about what it means to do the work that you're blessed to do, how does that make you feel? What are some of the feelings that come up when you just think about your business and think about the legacy that you're leaving on this world? So that's a twofold question, which is really interesting. One, I am still in awe. There are times when I go up in front of an audience, let's just say it could be from 50 to you know, a couple hundred people, and I am amazed at some of the things that God has enabled me to do. That's number one. So it's a overwhelming feeling that I can touch people from my age. Um, I'm not going to tell my age because I still think <laughs> that I'm going to <laughs> be this age forever, you know, and looks, but I can touch people that are younger than me, my age, and all the way over to a woman that's 62 that told her daughter she heard me speak one time, and I touched her so with my story that she was just inspired. She was inspired at what God was doing in my life and what I was able to do in the lives of others. And so I would say that One of the feelings that I have is happy. I am overjoyed that I've been given this opportunity to go in and um, affect lives the way that I can, but I'm also a change agent, and I feel like when you're a change agent, that it is your duty and, and partly your mission in life, not just to help people, but to inspire change. Change is inevitable in the world that we live in, but change inspired in the lives of others is something that's just amazing. Awesome. And I really like what you just said about the fact that you pretty much say what I say, and that is that your your mission, your vision, your purpose transcends even the business world. And so 
it's your life purpose. It's your life vision, your life mission. And I always tell people my mission in life is to empower, inspire, educate, and motivate women by equipping them with the tools to succeed, rock their yes. hit factors, and love their lives. And so for me, you know, that that goes beyond whatever I'm doing in business, right? That goes Yes, it does. It definitely goes yeah. beyond whatever I'm doing in business because I worked in corporate America. I used to work for a famous bank, you know, well-known bank in the United States, and I was destined, so-called in my college life, to become a part of corporate America, go and be a loan officer. I used to do um, financial analysis for the bank and their community uh, community development, yeah, community development department. So that was even a part of my mission, which I didn't even know, is that I wasn't just working in corporate America, but out of all the departments that I could have been placed in, I was placed in the community development department where I had to go into the community and look at what was going on, the changes, helping people with first-time home buyer seminars and things of that nature. So I winded up not going into corporate America because I felt a tugging on my heart to help people. I just felt like in corporate America I wouldn't be able to affect the lives of individuals in the community the way that I would be able to now. So I went on to take a whole other career path and go into social services. So. Awesome. And it's, you know, I love alignment. And it's funny because I always tell people I must have been allergic to corporate America. I <laughs> stayed there for a year. Um, I, I did that. And I really did not like it. And I think because I had so much freedom in my life, all my life, because I was mm-hmm. primarily in school. And when you go into corporate America and to somebody else's environment, that it's all about rules and regulations, and I value freedom. <laughs> that yes. is not for a good mix, and it's so funny because as I have gone along this life journey and come up to the purpose of really understanding what I call my it factor, my God-given gift is, I would have known that corporate America was not the place for me. But when right. you are at a place in your life when you're young and confused and you're just trying to get things right, you know, mm-hmm. you do what people tell you to do. And so, yes, I think that corporate America, now that I'm a little bit older and a little bit wiser, <laughs> I believe that corporate <laughs> America definitely has a place in the, you know, ecosystem of life. But I also believe right. that you kind of need to know what you're stepping into. And so I love the fact that you've utilized it as a tool, basically, to get where you are today. And so what was that aha moment that you've had in your journey? And you're like, now I get this. Now I get, like, for me, it's definitely corporate America. I know why I was in that environment, and I know why I didn't like it. So that was an awakening (laughs) moment for me. And I just would really love to hear, what was that awakening moment that you've had so far on your journey? I think there have been a couple of them, but my aha moment when I was in corporate America, I would say, was when I have uh, multiple earrings, you know, ear piercings. And so I remember my mentor, who was the senior vice president in the the company at that time, and he came to me and he was just like, you have too many earrings in your ear. And I was like, what? I have too many earrings in my ear, and I like color, and I like, like you said, that freedom and that flexibility. So I was like, I have too many earrings. He said, yeah. And he said, well, if you want to be a part of corporate America, you're going to have to streamline. You're going to have to basically look like everyone else. And I knew that my personality was not cookie cutter because I am a very colorful person, as you probably can tell. But I'm like, I can't, I don't want to get rid of this, and I don't want to change who I am, and that's not going to allow me to do what my purpose in life was, Uh, was, which was at that point in time, I had people coming up to me just throughout my course of life, and I've been able to tell them different things about situations and help them to see life in a different perspective or see things differently than they would have normally seen it. So that was already a gift that I had been given that I didn't really realize until people kept coming to me and kind of seeking advice and, you know, my girlfriend chats and 
you know, I would talk to different people at college, and I'm just like, I guess God gave me this gift of talking because I am talkative from what other people say. I don't know about <laughs> that. I'm still the verdict is still out, but I accept it and embrace it. So, you know, I was talking to people over and over and over again, and I found this theme of you are able to help me to see things in a way that I didn't see them before. And that was another aha moment that I'm able to kind of go in and give a different perspective on things and help people to navigate through situations. And I would say the third aha moment was the fact that I had to go through college and I had to kind of pull myself up on my bootstraps with the support of my village and my my parents and my family. I had to pull myself up on my bootstrap, but I had to incorporate a lot of life skills, which is where my life skills program comes from. I had to incorporate those life skills because other than that, I would not have been self-sufficient and I would not have been able to kind of defy the odds and become the woman that I was, graduate college and go on to get a job in social services while raising a child. And I know now that there are a lot of programs that enable young women to do that, which I want to be a part of as well. Yes, yes, awesome. And so I love how you definitely have a clarity of focus, right? It sounds like you... Just know what you want, and you know how to get it. Have you always been that person, or have some learning lessons in life come to impact your decision? So I would say that I have always been driven, yet I've always sought wise counsel, you know, as the Bible says, and I am a believer. Um, There are people that are placed in our lives, like, you know, my mother for one, um, other her best friend for another that I, a lot of them I call my aunts, my family members, and just people like mentors that really showed me what I could do with the gifts that I was already given. So I had the drive, I had the skills, I had the gift, but it wasn't until I learned how to apply them relationally that I was able to really affect change in someone else's life. And I I equate it to kind of being in a situation where I'm a pitcher. So I had all of the the skill set, but I needed that unconditional love. I needed the ability to be able to love on other people so that I could continue to be poured in while I continue to pour love out. And originally, I always equate myself to kind of like a Jonah type of person. (laughs) I was like, what? I'm supposed to be going over here and doing what? What did you say? What is my mission? You know, what is the vision? What is my purpose? Yeah, I would get those those subtle cues like you're supposed to be going in this direction, these opportunities would open up. And I'm, I'm like, you want me to go do what and go be vulnerable and go tell people my story and open up my wounds? And who wants to do that? But mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like once I found out that by me doing that and by me loving on people, I had more love than I thought that I had. And it was like the more love I poured out, And the more that I showed and gave to, let's say, the women in the shelter and the life skills program, the more I got poured into. And so that was something that really, really took me to the next level. It was like, okay, well, you know what? I've got enough to continue to do this until I can't do it anymore. So, Yes, 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 yes. And so when you come together with all those, like, gifts, skills, talents, and abilities, and you look at it to the point where right now in your life you're doing a lot of transferable skills. That's an H. My uh, master's degree is in human resources, <laughs> and it's funny that I just use that because I don't usually use employment terms, but that's what it is. You are using a lot of tra- uh, transferable skills and that you've developed over the years. You're utilizing them in your business, and so – Let's talk about the transferable skills and the importance of that because you have spent some time in working for yourself and you've also spent some time in working for someone else. And so as a person who's done both, because some people have not taken the full leap to do both, 
what do you think is the biggest takeaways that you can say? Like, make sure while you're on your corporate job or your career, go ahead and learn these things because they are vital in your entrepreneurship. Yeah, so the one thing, I have a dual career now. Uh, One thing that I do, I do a lot of seminars on time management because I do still work for the government. So I have a dual career with the government, and I also have my own business. So one of the things that I decided to do when I started working for the government and while I was in corporate America was to take advantage of every opportunity. There was a young lady when I first went to college, and she told myself and my parents that there are so many opportunities out there, but they are not going to come looking for you. And that's the one big thing that I would tell anyone. If you are working for someone else, there are opportunities for you to possibly go back to school. I went back to school and got my master's while I was working There are opportunities that they may give you as far as training. Try to take every training. They had this thing called lunch and learn. And what I would do, Mm -hmm. I would pack my lunch, and I would go, and I would sit, watch the video. I would learn, and I would eat my lunch. And I would tell you, I had over 500 employees in my building, and there were maybe about nine at the most in the Lunch and Learn. And these are free trainings, and you got a certificate at the end. So I went to every Lunch and Learn that I could. I went to every training that they would allow me to go to, and I also went back to school. So I was building myself, my skills, and and my career while I was at the government job. Number two, I learned while I was working for the government that I had to be result-oriented and relational-oriented in order to be a leader. So I just couldn't go in and be all results and bang out all of my work and be like, I'm done, next assignment. But I also had to be relational and learn how to effectively lead other people because those are the skills that I use now, not only to help, you know, inspire change, but also to help lead any team that I have working with me, because it's not a one-man show. There is no I in team, and I could not do this by myself. And that includes your family. That includes your network. I am a strong believer that your network is your net worth. And my first book was actually published by using my net work, because I did not have the money to go out and publish a book. So from my graphic designer to the person that looked over my legal contracts, I used my network. And most of them were people that I worked with. I worked with in the in government setting. So just by building those relationships over the years, I was able to go to them on another project and say, hey, can you do this outside of work for me? I'm working on this. And they were like, sure, whatever you need, I, I got you. And so that was one of the, those are a couple of the things that I learned while I was working for someone else. And each and every one of those skills I use now in my own business. Yeah, Ooh, that was awesome. Mouthful. <laughs> it was awesome, though, because I think it's, people don't think about those things, right? They don't think about going to those lunch and learns or going to other things that your company is paying for. We don't think right. about that. And then when you have that day when you quit, you missed out all that great information. And so when I was in corporate, I ended up very, very ill. I had shingles. I went from mm. a size 14 to a size zero. And I had to have right. three colonoscopies within 30 days to within 24 hours. So wow. with that, you know, it was all because of stress. And I know for yeah. saying that you miss so much of the information that, you know, you're afforded when you have a job. Like, I, at that age, I I am um, nine years, I started business, I think, 2009, so it's not quite nine mm-hmm. years, but um, <laughs> it's been long <laughs> enough to understand that when I started, I kind of had to bootstrap the whole thing, not right. having the knowledge that I do now as being that many years in business and being that many years older in life, what I would have right. done was kind of make it a strategic plan to leave. I didn't really know that. I knew I hated it. But I also think about the times that I might 
like, I left at the perfect time because I would have probably been sicker. I don't know. But mm-hmm. I do understand that, and I encourage people now that if you have a solid investor, like, definitely stay on that job as long as you can. Stand <laughs> it because it's like, oh, my goodness, you need to be there. Not only does it afford you the opportunities to make money, which as an entrepreneur is very expensive, to do Mm -hmm. sometimes when you talk about branding, you talk about marketing, you talk about learning what's latest and greatest in your field, you know, that comes with money. And so what you said definitely rings true because you need people who are still on their jobs need to make sure that they are utilizing it as a tool. And I think sometimes folks forget that it is a tool and it's not something that you, like drudgery, basically. I think now people just have to make sure that they, are connected to the right careers, but I do believe that you can totally use it as a tool to change the game. So I appreciate you saying that because we have a lot of people who don't know that. I didn't know that, that when I quit my job, I wish I would have, but I never thought about being an entrepreneur. So right. definitely it was important. Was entrepreneurship something that had always been on your mind as a little girl, or did you kind of fall into it like myself? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> when you said that, I was like, hey, that's me, because <laughs> I did not expect to write a book. I did not expect it to take me where it has taken me. Um, when I was working, I used to write letters, maybe do resumes, and I used to write for other people. If, they, if you needed a letter, if you needed something that had anything to do with writing, you would come to me because – I was the one that knew how to word things well. That was what my title was. They said, oh, you know, such and such told me to come to you because you know how to word things well. So my first book, Upon My Heart, Upon My Soul, was something that I had been writing different poems and proses and short stories in a journal. So those are my intimate thoughts. Those are things that I had gone through as a single parent, um, as a woman in general, and just in life. These are different emotions that we go through. So I had been jotting all my stuff down writing for me, and I decided one day because I have a high accomplishing nature like most entrepreneurs, I decided Mm -hmm. one day that I wanted to have this book typed up and I wanted to make a book for myself. I didn't want anybody else to read it. I didn't want to share it with the world. I didn't want anyone else to see it. I just wanted something on my bookshelf in my little home library that I can say that I accomplished. I did this. And it all started because I ran out of room in a notebook. That's how the whole (laughs) path started (laughs) because I ran out of room. And you know what happens when you run out of room for something. You're like, okay, so what am I going to do next? So this was something that I decided to do. Now, once I decided to tell people that I was making this book for myself because I was proud of the fact that I was just doing something and had a project to work on, they were like, well, why are you not sharing it with everyone else? I was like, no, no, this is just something I want for myself. It wasn't until one of my great friends and um, sis-in-law, she happens to have a dual role, but I asked her to type it up for me, and she was typing it and said, I don't know what you're going to do with this book, but I really think that you should share it with other people. And the reason why I think you should share it with other people is because when I was typing it, I felt like it was me. There were things in there, the emotions, the stuff that you've gone through. She said, I felt like it was me, and I feel like you should share it with other people. So then I said, okay, well, let me do a little market testing, you know, because then you got to, like, throw some fillers out and see if anybody really wants to hear what you have to say, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I go and I, you know, start doing some market testing. Well, you know, do you guys think that I should share it? And I ask my community. I got a lot of support in that project, and that's what started the entrepreneurship. It was just every little chip kind of just fell into place, and it was like if I'm going to do it, then I'm just going to do it. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to self-publish, and then I'm going to see where it takes me. And here I am. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so that whole falling into entrepreneurship is funny because I think that a lot of people don't really wake up with dreams to be an entrepreneur. The people I know, we kind of 
all migrate to it. And then I know right. like, the people who have woke, waken up like that and said, I want to be an entrepreneur. So at the time they were selling lemonade on the corner, I think that that is something definitely that has stuck inside of them. You know, that's something that they were like, all gung ho for that just was not my reality and definitely not yours from the story you told and I think that's amazing that we have catalysts in our lives who say, Let's think about this a little bit differently because right. if it wasn't for those people, I'm pretty sure there would have been people who may not have been able to shift from their own purpose if they didn't hear our voices. So I always love to bring out that question because there are so many people who are scared to go into entrepreneurship full time or right what hello in the world i'm here mhm okay mhm yeah, yeah they they do they have that that fear and i try to give everyone encouragement if i can do it and it falls into my program if i can make it then you can and there are different circumstances there are different mistakes that we may make in our lives there are different ways that we see things that may be differently, but there are there's one purpose, and whatever your purpose is, I say go for it. You know, when you get that chance and when you get those opportunities and when you get that little tug on your heart that says, you know what, despite what anybody else says or even despite some of those uh, negative voices that may be in my head because we all have them. You know what? I can do this. I say go for it because nothing beats a failure but a try. There is nothing that beats a failure but a try. So That's so true. <laughs> that is so true. And so we talked a little bit about your book, but tell us more in detail. Like what is the book about? Who is it for? What was your like response for some this like success stories or testimonials that you've gotten from people reading the book. So I have two books out. Um, the first one is Upon My Heart, Upon My Soul, and that one is for anyone uh, teens through adulthood, and it's not just specific to women, it's also specific to men because it's about parenting. So I've had women come to me and say, I can relate to everything that you say in this book and it inspired me and it gave me hope because that's the goal of the book. To men saying, you know, I didn't think that I was going to like the book and I am bawling. I had someone say that he was bawling. His daughter came to him and said, well, Daddy, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm reading this book, and you should read it because she had a child at that point. He had a grandchild. She wanted to read the book, and she was bawling because of the fact that it just touched their inner core of who they were and their emotions and their parenting and just giving them hope. The second book, which is a bestseller, is 20 Beautiful Women, and I came together. I am one of 20 beautiful women that came together in that book, and I thank uh, Saba for that opportunity. She's my publisher, and she is Seven House Media Publishing. She has uh, different books, and I am in volume four. So I came together with 19 other women, and we basically told our story. We told how our stories affected our lives, but how we were triumphant in those stories. But those stories not only brought us wisdom, they brought us beauty. And that is more of a countercultural movement because society often tells us what we should and should not look like, how we should and should not be beautiful, and what the definition of beauty is, when that's not really what our definition of beauty is, because beauty comes from the inside. So if I am beautiful as I am and I look totally different than you, my story is going to be different than you. My story makes me beautiful, and it enables me to go through my life and my journey being able to touch other people with that beauty. So my chapter in that book is called Freedom and Vulnerability, and I kind of discussed that a little bit before with my journey of not really wanting people to be in my private life. Because, you know, as we're young, we're taught not to, especially in the African-American community and uh, most communities, we're taught to keep our business at home. 
So for me to actually stand in front of people and not be society standard of beauty, but kind of open myself and expose my spots and my wounds and different things about myself and be vulnerable, it helps people to be free. It helped me to be free, to become vulnerable. So those are the two books, and that's kind of the life that I live. I live a life that's more open now, and I am able to kind of inspire and encourage other people by the fact that you don't have to be perfect. You can be vulnerable, and you can have freedom in that, and you are beautiful as you are. So... That's awesome, and I love I love anthologies. I am a true believer. I have one that comes out next month, and one comes out in January. I just had one. I believe in them, and I believe I, the second one that's coming out next month is the one the second one that I'm, I've ever produced. And I always tell people when it comes to anthologies, yes, it's great to be in something by yourself, but that's one voice. And so right. when you talk about hearing other people's perspectives, you know, you might, people even living, listening to this uh, show today, they might hear something that I say that sparks them, but they also hear something that you say and that sparks another person. And so right. just really staying true to our messages and what we can deliver. And like I always say, rock our it factors, then that is how we change the game and that is how we truly are able to cultivate people to that next level of greatness. And as we begin to wrap up this conversation, time just by super duper fast. Yes, <laughs> but, it did. <laughs> <laughs> I always love to ask people this question, and it simply is what is the one thing or a few things that you can say as many as you want to, but what are some things that you feel you're like, Stevie, we cannot leave the conversation today without talking about this. What would you say is that this? I'm going to say the one thing that I want to emphasize more than anything else is that as we, and I'm just going to be a plug for some things, but as we try to map out, which is um, my original last name, um, and you can follow me on Instagram at mapped it out, ma 2 ps ED, it out on Instagram, Twitter. But as we try to map out our lives, I say there is going to be a time in my life where I am not going to be able to maybe move around as much or do things the way that I'm doing them now. I just went indoor skydiving yesterday, which was ridiculously exciting. But I say live your life, like go for it, go for it and do whatever it is that within reason that you are called to do because traveling, I say travel a lot, I say love a lot, I say be persistent, I say be consistent, and I also say just be yourself because when you are yourself, then there is no one else that can tell you how to be or what to be. But once you tap into that and you're able to hone that, you're able to sustain it, and it makes a big difference. And lastly, be creative. I don't care whether it is painting a room or it is painting a ceramic tile or it is photography, writing a book, going through teaching different programs, even as far as corporate America, whether you are leading the diversity committee within your agency or your corporation, I say be creative because it is our creativity and our imagination that really makes us come alive. Awesome. Yes, so true. And it's funny. It's funny. I'm like, our, our thoughts are similar because I was just looking up Indoor skydiving today. That's funny. You were? So, <laughs> yes. I was just on Google. So I'm like, what in the world? We are aligned. You're confirming some stuff for me. But I definitely was looking it up because one of the things that's true about me, and it's funny because I do a lot of things to conquer this lately, is that I am not too cool with heights, right? And it's funny. Okay. It's one of my favorite things to do, but I don't fly because I'm not scared of heights. I fly because 
of the fact that it gets me there quicker. I'm not damn yeah. staying in cars for hours, <laughs> so I get on a <laughs> flight to make things happen. But I am praying upon that ascension that happens when you ascend in the sky and I'm praying right. the whole time. But <laughs> it's not, and I like my, I don't see it. I'm not a window seat type person. But it is just amazing because I truly was looking at indoor skydiving because I'm like, this would be the boss thing to do. I have a birthday coming up. And I will tell my age because I'm excited about this age. But I'll be 39 next month. And for me, 39 is like the epitome of, like, I got to do all this. 40 is going to be that big shame dick. So I got to, this is a whole lot of stuff. I'm about to live life fully in this year. And, uh I was looking that up to see. I'm like, well, maybe I'll do that on my birthday to commemorate the last year of my 30s. I'm very sentimental. And I have been very about marking <laughs> So <laughs> I saw that to say, oh, my gosh, that's awesome. So I am going to definitely check that out a little bit further. But, yes, ma'am, if I showed you my Google today, you will see that. But <laughs> I want to, <laughs> before we – allow you to leave, please have your contact information one more time given to us so that we can make sure to connect and follow you further. Yes, so on Instagram and Twitter, it is Map It Out, M-A-P-P-E-D, It's Out. And I will also be appearing at your event, which is the Pink and Purple Footprints. And I'm really excited about that because the one uh, person that I told you, my dear friend, my sister-in-law, she was diagnosed with breast cancer stage one um, earlier this year. So it is going to be an exciting time to just revel in her victory and um, the other women there and also women that have had a past with domestic violence. So I will be there. Also, if you would like to purchase my book, it's 20beautifulwomen.com slash Aikisha, I-K-E-C-I-A. Yes, I am excited. I, it's amazing how the event happened, really. I, for me, you know, it was kind of like the vision got changed. <laughs> God changed the vision. And I understand yes. why he changed it. He changed it primarily because I of the work that Alcides Tether and Sheree Parker, they're in the Pennsylvania area, and Alcides, you know, yes. from Pennsylvania. So when I was like, okay, guys, what is going on here? And that story that you, you just shared about your sister-in-law, that is beautiful because people like that, that's why we need to do this event. And I didn't know, like, that was, the Pink and Purple Footprint celebration was not something that was Stevie Aisha Mills' idea. That's totally God, and it's amazing. I cannot wait to see the photos because, you know, Alta Beast and Sharia will be the ones spearheading that um, right. in that area. So it's just a beautiful thing of how God was like, Stevie, you stay home, allow the people on the platform to get this done, and that's what yes. I'm doing in the obedience of God. And just the whole process of this event I know it's going to be life-changing. I know that you all are going to have an amazing time. I know that it's going to be just you're going to share things. And even on the conversation today to hear you talk, you just bring yeah. so much life in your words, and it's going to be a blessing to so many people. I'm just oh, thankful thank that God you. used me. <laughs> you're welcome, yes. I'm so thankful God used me as a vessel to just kind of flow it through and pass it on. <laughs> yes, 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 so, amen, to God be the glory, and I cannot yes. wait to see see what happens on October 14th, believe me, I'm sharing you all on from the great state of Virginia, and <laughs> I know <laughs> that it's going to be some just prayers and beautiful things, and just, I just feel chains breaking, I feel, I feel tears falling, I, but I know that it's all for the glory of God, and that's amazing, so I keep yes, telling <laughs> thank you for being here on the conversation today, it is an uplifting one that will change lives, thank you, thank, oh, thank, thank you, you for this. having me, yes ma'am, I really we appreciate all... this. You're welcome. I'm so glad that you came. You trust me. People are going to get something out of it, whether it's something for you know to keep on going on, or if it's something yes. for 
you know, career. We talked about career. We talked about health. We talked about wellness. We talked about being. We talked about faith. A lot was uncovered in this conversation. And, again, give your website one more time so that people will be able to get your books and connect with you. So it is 20beautifulwomen.com forward slash Ikeisha, I-K-E-C-I-A. And thank you again, Stevie, for having me. And I look forward to the event on October 14th. Yay, yes. Yay. So you're so welcome. Everybody, you know how you can connect with me. All you have to do is to learn how to spell my first name, right, or know how. Some of y'all know because I, <laughs> <laughs> I stay on it. But S-T-E-V-I-I, again, S-T-E-V-I-I. TV.com is where you can find me all over social media. And it's so funny. This is a story I have to share before we go. But Old Navy has some TV pants coming up. I said, all right. Now, y'all going to have to right. know. All right. <laughs> yes. It's like I E. I'm like, I'm I I. So y'all got to fix it now. <laughs> but they do. <laughs> and it dropped today. So I am excited that the world is getting TV eyes. So, <laughs> so, guys, you all. Make it a great day. You know I never say have a great day. Make it a great day. Why? Because you, 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 and yes, you too have the power to do so. Talk to you later. Bye.